The most important message we got from the European parliamentary election results was that the majority of the population of the European Union, they don't uh, trust the uh, current governments, uh, mostly the establishment uh, parties, and that we face a crisis. We have in uh, many countries in the European Union a majority against uh, the war in ongoing war in Ukraine and uh, against the strategy of fueling this war with more and more weapons and uh, more and more money for Ukraine. And on the other side, uh, of course, uh, social cuts and less money for the people in the countries. So they are, that's why people are um, getting more criticizing um, the strategy of the governments. They would like to have more uh, political uh, engagement here, diplomacy, negotiations, rather than more weapon and more uh, uh, money for the war in Ukraine. And I think um, uh, you can see this from the results of the European parliamentary elections as well. Well, we do uh, face a really deep crisis uh, in the strategy of escalation of the NATO, of their proxy war in uh, Ukraine against Russia. Uh, as we have seen now at the Washington uh, NATO summit, um, the, there are three main things uh, at stake. The one is the escalation, uh, deepening the strategy of more weapons, more money for the war in Ukraine. Uh, then uh, the second is uh, the NATOization of Asia. Uh, so uh, besides the escalation against Russia and Ukraine, you have the expansion strategy against China. All the mistakes in the past the NATO has done towards Russia in enlargement and encircling of Russia, ignoring the security interests of Russia, they're now doing it against um, China in uh, having um, client states like the Asian Pacific Four, or uh, like Japan, South Korea, Australia, and New Zealand, but also uh, adding these countries with um, challenger states against China, like uh, Philippines or Singapore. They uh, are there um, uh, in more in confrontation against the nuclear power China. And uh, the third point is with Europe, uh, Europe is, uh, is uh, uh, I mean, many people in Europe, they have the impression that the United States as uh, the leading country in the NATO is uh, willing or is happy or uh, would uh, throw their allies, Europe, under the bus for their own interests, uh, like they have, especially regarding the war in Ukraine, because they want to use their allies' resources without using their own resources or lowering the cost for themselves for this war in Ukraine uh, against Russia. And uh, this means a lot of economic problems we do face. Um, this has the risk of an economic downfall of uh, Europe. And um, that's the reason, for example, that many people in Germany, 55% are against the NATO membership of Ukraine. Uh, the, the labels right and left, uh, they are a little bit um, irritating at the moment in, in Germany and not only Germany, in Europe. Um, so we do have, after the, the war in Ukraine, uh, after the war started, we have um, uh, established uh, the, the normal left party, Die Linke, for example, my former party, which I did leave uh, at, in October 2023, and launched in January a new party with nine other members of parliament, the Sarah Wagenknecht Alliance uh, for Reason and Justice. And um, our former party, the Linke, is in favor, for example, for more sanctions against Russia. And uh, we, as Sarah Wagenknecht Alliance, uh, we reject sanctions, economic sanctions, especially this economic warfare against Russia is a shot in the own legs at the moment uh, because uh, it it does hit us. I mean, the German foreign minister, Annalena Baerbock, once said, 2022, that the sanctions against Russia have the goal to ruin the economy of Russia. 
she wants to destroy the economy of Russia. And um, as we can see, uh, according to the forecast of the IMF, and IMF is not a left radical institution or anti-imperialist institution, IMF says that the economy growth of Russia is 3.2%. And in Germany, for example, 0.2%. That means the economy of Russia is shrinking, uh, is growing, and the economy of Germany is shrinking despite the war and despite the sanctions and the economic warfare of European Union and United States against Russia. That means this uh, politics is a boomerang, and uh, and the the and that left party is now in favor of sanctions and says. Uh, instead of, you know, being against the sanctions to say we need more sharpen and more hard uh, sanctions against Russia is for me not a left policy or even partly to be in favor of weapon deliveries uh, to uh, Ukraine. And we as uh, the Alliance are Wagenknecht, we are strictly against weapon deliveries. We are in favor of diplomacy, a politics of detente. Uh, we need uh, a politics of disengagement uh, in Europe and, uh, uh, and to stop the weapon deliveries. We need a ceasefire, we need peace negotiations uh, in Ukraine uh, to stop this killing on both sides and, and to stop, of course, the economic uh, shrinking uh, of our economy, which hits, uh, which hits, of course, the working class people in Germany. So that's why the labeling of left and right, this is just uh, um, yeah, irritating at the moment. So many left in Europe, they just lost their track uh, being against weapon deliveries, being against wars, being against uh, sanctions, because sanctions are nothing else than um, weapons of mass destruction. Uh, it's always the um, the population which gets affected in the suffering by economic sanctions like we see in uh, Cuba for decades. Uh, we see it in Syria. We have seen it in Venezuela. Uh, people are dying because uh, the usual uh, medicine against di uh, diabetes or, um, or um, uh, other um, other uh, uh, health uh, uh, problems, they don't have this or they don't have uh, to, to have a fair economy. So that's why we are against the, econ uh, the, the economic sanctions and I'm, unfortunately, uh, other left parties are in favor. Most important thing is to know what the NATO is and uh, to uh, dismantle the NATO. Um, and that's why, of course, uh, for example, I wrote this book because it was important to me uh, to show the 75 years of NATO is 75 years of denial, 75 years of propaganda, of uh, lies. Um, for example, we have to dismantle uh, a NATO that it's not a defense alliance. They always say they are a defense alliance. It is not. It's just a myth. It's a big myth of the NATO. Uh, for example, 25 years ago, NATO started their aggression against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. They attacked Libya in 2011. They attacked um, uh, 20 years uh, uh, in, in Afghanistan with so many civil casualties, so many uh, uh, war crimes, uh, which, is, uh, which is not uh, enlightened uh, till this day. And uh, the other thing is the leading nation of uh, the, the NATO, USA, attacked Iraq with more than one million killed people. Or the last 20 years of the war on terrorism, uh, according to the Brown University in Rhode Island, more than 4.5 million people have been killed in this war led by USA and their uh, allies. Or secondly, the, the myth that um, uh, NATO would be an uh, alliance, a collective of um, democracies and states of rule of law. And this is just uh, a historic lie because one, just one example, one founding member of the uh, NATO was Portugal under the fascist dictatorship of Salazar. And Salazar did um, torture 
uh, he, uh, Africans uh, in the colonies, in concentration camps in Mozambique, in Angola, in the colonial wars. So NATO had no problem at all with uh, fascist dictatorships like uh, Salazar's Portugal or, for example, uh, Franco's Spain or with military coups in uh, 1967 in Greece, 1980 with Turkey. So that was not a problem. And this is, has nothing to do with democracy. And the third myth of the NATO is that they are an alliance, a collective of human rights. And this is not true if you see the 4.5 million uh, in the last um, 20 years on the war on terrorism has been killed by the US wars. Or like, see, Till today, they have their torture camp in Guantanamo Bay, where people get tortured without uh, a fair trial, without anything, and without contact to anybody. And, uh, and 14 years of persecution, political persecution, of the journalist Julian Assange, which uh, crime was only to, to show the world the war crimes of the US in Iraq, the war crimes of the NATO, states in uh, Afghanistan. So we first we have to see what is propaganda and what is reality, what is, what is the truth. The second thing is uh, long before wars, uh, truth is knocked unconscious and we have the task to help this truth on its feet again. And that is very important. We have to look for the, uh, for the uh, truth. And the third thing is, I think, uh, especially for people like me in, in the global north uh, and the working class uh, of uh, w um, peace and freedom-loving people in the global north, it is important to have, a, to have a solidarity, to work together, to coordinate our forces, our strength, uh, our energy, with uh, the people of the Global South. That is very important, I think, uh, because it's the only chance where we can, how we can face all these warmongers, all the war machines like the NATO.